I call the member for MacArthur. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. The National Health Amendment Fifth Community Pharmacy Agreement Initiatives Bill 2011 amends the National Health Act 1953 by introducing a number of initiatives as agreed between the Pharmacy Guild and the Government in 2010 under the Fifth Community Pharmacy Agreement. These include the Continued Dispensing Initiative, which seeks to allow the supply of pharmaceuticals by approved pharmacists without prescription under certain conditions, known as Continued Dispensing Initiative. The bill also introduces the Medication Chart Initiative. This allows for the supply and claim of pharmaceuticals listed on a pharmaceutical benefit scheme, the PBS, in residential aged care facilities. The bill provides for the use of standardised med medical chart for the supply and PBS claims, rather than requiring a doctor to write a separate prescription. Finally, the National Health Amendment Fifth Community Pharmacy Agreement Initiative Bill 2011 makes technical amendments through Schedule 3 to allow the Minister to make determinations in relation to the maximum quantity or repeats for a particular medicine. The Continued Dispensing Initiative, as outlined in Schedule 1 of this bill, allows for the supply of pharmaceuticals by farmers without a prescription under certain conditions. There are currently certain provisions available for pharmacists to provide consumers with prescription medication without a script. These provisions are cumbersome and expensive for both the pharmacist and the consumer. The first is owing to prescription protocols, where a pharmacist can supply a PBS medicine after contacting the patient's doctor by phone. This protocol places a pharmacist at financial risk as it relies on a doctor to provide the pharmacy with a prescription within seven days in order for the PBS claim to be made. In addition, under state and territory regulations, an emergency supply provision exists whereby a consumer can purchase a three-day emergency supply of essential medication where it is not reasonably practical for that patient to acquire a script. The medicine is not subsidised through the PBS, so the consumer must pay full price. This practice can also result in the pharmacist having to break a full pack to provide three days supply. A number of local pharmacists have complained to me that these provisions can result in a waste of prescription medication while leaving consumers out of pocket with only a very limited supply of medication. The continued dispensing initiative will help to relieve some of these issues from medications that will be covered by the initiative. This is very true in regional areas of MacArthur where GP to patient ratios are above one GP to 4,000 patients. A better solution to this problem would be for the government to deliver more doctors for the MacArthur region. However, this initiative does at least provide patients with a longer window of opportunity to see their doctor if their script runs out. Moreover, I can report that local pharmacists in MacArthur are enthusiastic about the benefits of the continued dispensing initiative. Unfortunately, there is, there is no real certainty in this bill as to which medications will be covered by the initiative. The Department's consultation paper and the previous Minister's second reading speech has identified two groups of medications that will be covered by this initiative. These are the oral hormonal contraceptives, or the pill, and the cholesterol-lowering drugs. The Department's consultation paper claims that these two groups are selected because they are well tolerated and have a, great, have a good safety profile. However, due to the outstanding lack of detail in the bill, the eligible pharmaceuticals items and the conditions of supply are not specified and will be determined by the ministerial determination. In addition, this bill should have, at the very least, set out the specific circumstances under which continued dispensing can occur. The Department's consultation paper advises that the ministerial determination will refer to the guidelines of the continued dispensing of eligible prescribed medicines by pharmacists. These guidelines were developed by the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia in consultation with stakeholders and provide professional standards that must be adhered to under this initiative. Indeed, the sheer lack of detail in this bill means that ministerial determinations will set out all the circumstances for dispensing under this bill. The Minister will also determine the protocols for consumer safety and integrity of this initiative, as well as the list items or pharmaceutical benefits that are eligible to be supplied by pharmacists under the continued dispensing arrangements. I would prefer to actually see that the draft legislative instruments. The Minister's office has promised that this information will be tabled in due course. This is another case of the government providing little to no details and asking the coalition hat in hand to just trust me. At the very least, the future changes to eligible pharmaceuticals and conditions will be done by legislative instrument, allowing parliamentary scrutiny and disallowance. I would now like to speak on the second initiative in the bill, the Medication Chart Initiative, which will allow for supply and claiming of pharmaceuticals based on standardised medical chart in residential aged care facilities. The MacArthur electorate is fast becoming a destination for aged care and retirement living. 
local residents and their families, as well as their doctors, are very excited about this initiative as proposed in the Fifth Community Pharmacy Agreement. This measure will help reduce the administrative burden in aged care facilities and improve patient safety. I hope that this initiative will provide a better outcome for all stakeholders, especially doctors and patients. The Australian Medical Association also supports chart-based prescribing in residential and aged care, as it will significantly reduce red tape for medical practitioners. The Fifth Community Pharmacy Agreement will provide $15.4 billion over a five-year period for community pharmacy. Community pharmacy has transformed Australia's pharmaceutical industry over many years, providing affordable pharmaceuticals to communities all over Australia, especially those in remote and regional Australia. The Coalition provided solid and stable policy for community pharmacy while in government and we continue to that, that support today. The Pharmaceutical Guild negotiated with the government in good faith, making a number of large concessions to arrive at the Fifth Community Pharmacy Agreement. While I support the Fifth Community Pharmacy Agreement and the initiatives that have come from the agreement, this bill, Schedule 1 in particular, shows Australian people what a woeful lack of detail this government pays to their legislation. For to their legislation. For example, this bill has absolutely no details whatsoever about an approved pharmacist, what an approved pharmacist would be. It contains no details as to what conditions would be in place to protect consumer safety and prevent the misuse of this, of this initiative. There are no details about what medications will be available under these initiatives. I hope, I hope that we don't, do not see a repeat of the incompetence and deception of the previous Minister for Health when she signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Medicines Australia to provide policy stability in return for $1.9 billion of savings in the PBS. This recent agreement includes spinning up the addition of new medicines to the PBS. It took this government until September last year to list medicines that were deferred from February. They also announced last year that there would be further deferrals in the future for new medicines subsidised through the PBS. The lack of detail in this bill does not abode well. All I can say is that the government has a shameful record of keeping its promises. I cannot see how this government can see as see it as being appropriate to deny patients access to their medication, especially the elderly and those suffer from long-term illnesses. When they see fit to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on dodgy advertising about the carbon tax, including, out -handing funding, including handing out funding to indoctrinate toddlers and school children. I will not oppose this bill, however I believe this government needs to start paying more attention to detail and include more operational aspects in this legislation if they want to deliver any certainty to the pharmaceutical industry. Thank you Mr Deputy Speaker.